praise the Lord. It's uh, my privilege to welcome you to our Bible study. Like we've been saying in the previous studies, we are taking the studies from one of our books that uh, God has helped us to put together, titled The Abiding Life in Christ. This is the fourth in the series of the study that we have been going through. We first looked at life outside Christ. We also looked at entering into Christ's kingdom. And the last study we looked at the abiding life. We are breaking it into two because it's a little bit lengthy. So we are making progress in that study. As we are looking at the abiding we have seen the command, we have seen the conditions and the consequences for not abiding in Christ. Today we are looking at another aspect of the abiding life in Christ, that is catalog of abiding saints. Saints in Christ that remained steadfast unto the end. As we concluded the last study, we saw people who could not continue in the experience and they fell by the wayside. We are looking at the other aspect of the study of saints who also stood so that you will know that you too can stand. We don't have only the examples of failures, there are the examples of success. There are examples of faithful saints who stood their ground, who remained in the experience. And I want to believe God that as we go through this catalog of abiding saints, you will take a decision. And that decision I encourage you to take is to stand like them until the end. Is to stand without turning back. Christ's instruction to his followers was that they must continue to identify and abide or dwell in him in an unbroken fellowship and what communion is for them to remain and continue without taking a leave saints many saints of old took heed to this instruction they didn't play with it. They agreed. They stood by it. They obeyed it completely. The scripture is full of examples of such broken, unbroken fellowship with the Lord. Unfortunately, some of Christ's disciples went back and their names were never mentioned again in the scriptures. This is because they did not abide to the end. The vacuum their exit created were filled with other faithful followers. Turn the Bibles with me as we look at John chapter 6. Gospel according to St. John. And we are looking at chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 66 of John said, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Will you copy the example of this one that one Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, you are the Savior, you are the, the true Son of God, the Son of the living God. Judas Iscariot was among these twelve that made this commitment to continue to abide with Christ, yet he betrayed his master, as we saw in our last study. He could not continue to abide to the end. But men like Peter, John the Beloved, Apostle Paul, John the Baptist, Caleb, Enoch, and a host of others, they continued to the end and they received the overcomer's reward. The Bible says, labor 
to be among those. My encouragement, my counsel to you is strive. See to be among the faithful few that will endure to the end like the patras of old whom we have mentioned. Let's have a, um, a study uh, with, uh, from the scriptures to see this list of men and women. Turn to, with me John chapter 15. Let's get back to our test in John chapter 15. This time I'm reading verses 4 and verse 5. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide, abide in the vine there is no independence no more can you except you abide in him i am the vine ye are the branches and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing are there people that remained in this experience yes let's see Gen uh, Genesis chapter 5 the example of Enoch Genesis in chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 22 of Genesis 5 we are looking at the example and the lifestyle of Enoch verse 22 and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah Let's take back up to verse 21. And then Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And then Enoch lived, and then Enoch war with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat son of Enoch were 365 years. And then Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. That this man Enoch was born, as we said in our last study, natural man, sinful man, though religious. But at the age of 65, he took a firm decision to begin a new work with God in his life. At what age are you waiting for to take decision to leave sin? At what age are you waiting for to stand for Christ and stand with Christ and remain with him for the rest of your life? It came to a, a point in time in the life of Enoch that he said, I'm tired with sin. I am no more going back into sin. Break from sin from today. When are you going to take that decision that Enoch took? And he walked with God after he began Methuselah 300 years. 300 years. You don't have the opportunity to live 300 years like Enoch. But that number of years that God has given you, why not take the decision to live the rest of it like Enoch lived? To walk with God like Enoch walked with God. Maybe you are 20 years, maybe you are 30 or 35 or 40 or 60. Why not use the rest of your life to work with God? And Enoch worked with God. After he began Methuselah, 300 unbroken years of fellowship with him. And he began so. You see, a walk of righteousness, a life of holiness does not deprive you from getting the blessings in this world. Enoch was walking with God. That didn't make him barren. That didn't make him poor. That didn't make him inferior to others. It is no don't wait until problem draw you to the point of salvation. Don't wait until sickness draws you to the point of salvation. Don't wait until is a need you could not meet and you have tried here and there. That Don't wait for it to be what will bring you. But if it is what brings you and you begin a work with God, good and fine. Leave the rest 
of your life with God and for God. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God consistently, continuously. For God, I pray you will remain consistent until God take you in Jesus' name. Look at how the New Testament reported the life of Enoch in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And I read verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, you too can be translated. By faith, you too can get to heaven. By faith, you too will serve God. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. For before his translation, before God took him, he had this testimony. Oh, people were looking at the life of Enoch. They say, we have seen a change in you. For the past 65 years, we were living together. We walked with God. We saw the change. And every day they were checking him, they saw he was consistent. They saw he was on the right path. For all that years, and they could testify. I want to let you know, there are a cloud of witnesses that are checking over, checking your life, that are looking at your life, studying you. What will be the testimony they will have about you? But for Enoch, there was a good testimony. I pray there will be a good testimony for you too in Jesus' name. That before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. May you please God for the rest of your life. May you serve God in truth and in spirit for the rest of your life. May you serve God acceptably. Joshua in chapter 14. Turn your Bibles with me. As we are seeing men of old. Pleasing to God. Joshua in chapter 14. And um, I'm reading from verse 6 of Joshua chapter 14 and we'll take it from verse 6 then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gagar and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses the man of God concerning me and thee in Kedes Bania. forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kedesbania to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people mad. I fully, I completely followed the Lord my God. Can you see the testimony of uh, Caleb? He said, when my colleagues, there were 12 that were sent out, only him and Joshua was on one side. The rest of the 10 were on the other side. You know in the world we say, majority carries the vote. That is in the world. But in the kingdom of God, it's not majority that carries the vote. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their knees. The Bible says that by the witness of two or three, every truth shall be what? Shall be established. The quorum, the majority, is one with God. Joshua and Caleb were only the two that were, that were with God. The others went away. And Caleb said, but Completely, I totally followed the Lord my God. And Moses were on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thy inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. You see, he said, because you have fully, because you have consistently, because you continuously, follow the lord you will reap you will get the reward of 
faith of faithful following the Lord. And so in verse 10, and now behold, the Lord had kept me alive as he said. That God's faithfulness. Caleb remained faithful with God and God remained faithful to Caleb. God did not abandon him. God God did not disappoint him. God did not, you know, as, uh, you know, deny him at any point in time. No. Because he was faithful in serving God, in following him, in standing for him, God himself kept his own promise to him. He, as he promised him, as he said, he kept him these 40 and 5 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day, as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. He said his strength has not diminished. He is still remaining steadfast, healthy, physically, to go ahead and to fight that God has been faithful. I want to tell you that if you are faithful in following the Lord, you will also, in, you know, partake and benefit from God's faithfulness in keeping you. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, I'm reading from verses 1 through to verse 3. Matthew chapter 3, from verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the word of the Lord, make his path. He came and began preaching in the wilderness. What was he preaching? He said, Repent you. He remained faithful in the gospel, in preaching the message of the kingdom. How do we know that he remained faithful to the end? Look at Christ's testimony about John the Baptist in Luke chapter 7, verse 24. Luke chapter 7, verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, the John was then in prison, and he sent his disciples, Go, I'm hearing testimony of what is happening. Go and find out whether that's the Messiah I was the forerunner I was preaching about and preparing his way. And when they met Christ and asked questions, then as the, then the messengers of John were departed, Jesus, he began to speak unto the people concerning out into the wilderness for to see. That time that John was in the wilderness preaching, we read in Matthew chapter 3, he, he was asking his hearers, what did you go there to see? Then he answered, a reed shaking with the wind. Did you go into the wilderness to see? You know what a reed is? A reed is a small tree, a small shrub, a small um, um, tree that is light that breeze blows anyhow breeze come the wind come from the east it will bend the wind come from the other direction it will bend it cannot stand like a, a strong tree is he, neither here nor there and the jesus was asking them did you go to the wilderness to see an unstable man did you go to see into the wilderness to see a, 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 a compromising preacher what way to see a reed shaking with the wind and a compromising a preacher that is here and there today he's black tomorrow is blue didn't you go to see a steadfast um, a preacher that is standing on the truth consistently continuously verse 25 but went you but what went you out for to see 
a man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled, dressed, live delicately, and kings cause. He said, when you went into the wilderness, did you see somebody who was gorgeously, you know, dressed up in a lavish way, like um, uh, um, somebody that is doing a beauty comfort beauty competition and fashion competition he said no the people that dress like that expensively extravagantly that's where you see them you don't see people who are well dressed in the wilderness you don't see people who are gorgeously dressed in such attire in the bush in the wilderness so that's not what they saw when they went to see john but verse 26 but what went ye out for to see a prophet yes is there a prophet we are looking for a fashion uh, uh, designer no not a fashion designer but a prophet yea i say unto you i'm much more than a prophet he gave jesus gave testimony that john the beloved that john was a prophet indeed john the baptist was much more than a prophet and he was an uncompromising uh, preacher he was a steadfast preacher he was a preacher that does not that corrupt unto you among those that are born of women there is not a greater prophet than john the baptist but he that is least in the kingdom of god is greater than he why of all the testimony say he that is least those who have made it to heaven those who have finished their race to the end those who have gotten into the presence of god and they opened the gates of heaven and they entered and they say welcome thou faithful servant enter into the joy of the lord those that have made it to heaven they say they are greater than he and all the people that had him and the publicans justify god being baptized with the baptism of john but the pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of god against themselves being not baptized testimony of jesus uh, uh, that uh, 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 for john the baptist that this man steadfast consistent continuous he abided in the experience in his ministry unto the end and we see ministers we see preachers they be, they when they began they began like john the baptist fairy preaching but temptation what to eat how to train children how to pay school fees how to pay house rent and money bars in the church close their mouth and they compromise the truth they could not continue preaching the message of the cross the way they started they compromise the world i pray you will not be a compromiser i pray you will not be a reed that is shaking with the wind that you will be like john the baptist steadfast unto the end and that you in jesus name in luke chapter 5 i read verse 10 and verse 11 luke chapter 5 we are looking at list catalog of abiding saints we have seen enoch we have seen caleb we have seen john the baptist we are now seeing john the beloved luke chapter 5 verse 10 and so was also james and john the sons of zebedee which were partners with simon and jesus said unto simon fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men and when they have brought their ships to the land they forsook all and they followed him this was the call of john the beloved along with peter and james his brother and they began with christ and how do we see the, he continued unto the end look at john gospel according to saint john chapter 19 and i'm reading from verse 25 john chapter 19 verse 20 
verse 25 says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus. You see, he called him by the seaside. He followed him for three and a half years. He followed him to Pilate at the judgment. He followed him to the cross. Now at the cross, now stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple, that, that is John, to his own home. He took him, said to his own house. But the point you need to get here, that he followed Jesus to the cross. He began with him from the side of the sea, and he followed him unto the cross. Look at Revelations, Revelation chapter 1. He, he was with him till the end. Revelation chapter 1, and I'm reading verse 9. I, John, whom also am your brother and companion. Can you see it? Say, I've been a companion of Jesus from the day he caught me, he called me on, from the, on the seashore side, and I left my boat, I left the nest, I followed him, I became his companion. I became his companion in tribulation. When the Pharisees and the Sadducees were persecuting him, I was his companion. I was by him. I, I became I came to Gethsemane and I sold his master. I handed him over to the Jews where the chief priests. I was his companion. I was his companion. I followed him to the judgment hall. I didn't turn back. I, John, who also and your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and in patience of Jesus Christ was in the eyes that is called Patmos. Why did they throw me into this solitary island? Why did they abandon me here where there is no life? Why did they you know, use me to do a, a food for the wild animals? For the word of God. Because I stood for the word of God. Because I decided that we will not change. Because I'm determined that we remain the same. They threw me to the island of Patmos because of the word of God. Of Jesus Christ. I pray you will stand. Your testimony of Jesus will remain firm. You say I was a compan his companion in tribulation. Don't be ashamed. When they are persecuting Christians and making mockery of them, and you go and hide. When they are calling Christians bad names, I say, I don't want anybody to call me a bad name. Let me do what they want me to do so that I will be in their good book. You will be in the good book that will lead you to hell. You will be in the good book that will lead you to eternity without Christ. You will be in the good book that will exclude you from the kingdom of God and from heaven. You will be in the good book that will deny you the mansions that Jesus had promised his followers. John said, no, I decided to be his companion in tribulation and be his companion in patience and be his companion companion all through even to the cross where he died the death of shame where he sacrificed his own life for my sins for your sins and for the sins of the whole world he followed him to that end he didn't run away like other disciples that scattered he stood with him to the end i pray you will stand with christ unto the end in jesus name as of the apostles in chapter 9 we are looking seeing another example of a saint of old who stood to the end uh, that is paul the apostle as of the apostle chapter 9 and we are reading from verse 3 we are reading about the conversion of paul the apostle how he became saved and how he remained in that experience unto the end as of the apostles chapter 9 
as he journeyed with a letter from the high priest to go and persecute the Christians in Damascus. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, as Damascus and suddenly there shone right about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So why have, have you taken to do havoc against me and against my church? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord. Do you see the second time he's calling Jesus Lord? What's the meaning of Lord? Lord means owner. Lord means somebody you fully, completely to guide, to direct, to dictate what happens to you. Somebody you have given every, every given over your entire life to him, let him dictate, let him direct, let him have a say on what happens. That means you have given willingly your right to him. To decide on what he will do. That's what Paul did here. That's conversion. That is total surrender. That is total giving of his life to Christ. And he said, and the Lord, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? I know I have an assignment from the chief priests. I have an assignment from the Pharisees. I have an assignment from them in Jerusalem. But now that I've surrendered to you, and now that I've, give, I've given over my life to you, now I have submitted completely to you, my focus needs to change. What do you want me now to do? I, I've forgotten, I've thrown away, I've rejected the one I was going to do. Give me the assignment you want me to do, and that is what I will do. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Did Paul the Apostle remain in this experience, in this complete, total, absolute surrender? This is what he called complete, absolute surrender to the Lord. Did he continue with this surrender, this complete surrender he made to the Lord? Yes. What is the witness? What is the evidence? Turn your Bibles with me to Philippians in chapter 3. Reading verse 13, it says the brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. That's Paul writing to the church in Philippi. He said, brethren, he called them brethren, men of like precious faith, men that had the same experience, men that surrendered completely to Christ like him, men who are on the same narrow way that is leading to the narrow gate that leads into life. Men that are following Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have understood, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind the experiences I have over these 13 years plus, I put them behind. The assignment I have done over the preaching and the miracles and the testimonies of this past 13 years I fought onto those things which are ahead of me, which are in front of me. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See? I am pressing towards. There is something here in front of me. I am pursuing. I am pursuing a mark. Not the mark I set for myself, but the mark that Jesus has set for me. The mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Say so this mark I am pursuing is in Christ. I am not outside Christ to pursue a mark. I am in Christ. I am pursuing the mark he has set for me. That is the abiding life. That's the man that is consistent, continuous in him. 
Say after many, many years, he said, I'm still there. I'm pursuing that same assignment he gave me on the day I completely surrendered to him on the day on the way to remained there. In Second Timothy, in chapter four of Second Timothy, in chapter four, towards the end of his life, and when he knew. In Philippians, he said, he's pursuing that mark. In this 2 Timothy, he can say, I've got there. 2 Timothy chapter 4, from verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. Say, so yes, I pursue this mark to the end. I am now ready to be what? To be offered. And the time of my departure now is at hand. In, at, to the, at the time of writing to the Philippians, he said, that mark is in front of me. I want to reach there. In writing to Timothy, in this second Timothy, he said, I've got to the mark. I pray you will get to your mark. I pray you will finish your ministry. Be up, and you will still have a lot to be done. Can you see a man like Joshua? When he was old and speaking in years he could no longer go out because of old age but there remained yet much land to be possessed the ministry the assignment god gave him he has not fulfilled and old age came i pray old age will not catch you death will not catch you until you finish the ministry that god has a mark for you for paul he says god a mark a ministry for me god gave me assignment and i was walking towards that mark running towards it pursuing to reach it and by his grace i've got to it i know i've now finished the assignment i'm now ready to be offered i have fought a good fight i have finished my call may you finish your work with god i have kept the faith henceforth from right now of forward from this moment forward timothy i am telling you there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearance he said i finished my room there's a crown waiting for me but he said that crown is not only for me there are other people who will see my example because i've told them follow me as i follow christ and so if you follow the example of paul god who kept paul will keep you until you reach your mark i believe i pray and i ask the lord that every one of us that is at the designated time there are people who couldn't reach their mark, who couldn't finish the assignment, and their time allocated to them ended. And so they are leaving this world, not as a sinner, but unfulfilled. May you fulfill your, your ministry. May you fulfill your work. That what Paul said, Archippus, make sure you fulfill what has been given to you and complete it. And you too will fulfill your own ministry in Jesus' name. So that at the, as your allotted time on earth here is ending, you are, you are concluding your assignment here on earth, and you are going to, to see the Lord with joy, not with regret. You are going to see the Lord with testimony, like Paul had his own testimony. So we see that it is faith. On God's unwavering promises for anyone to continue to anchor or to hook his entire life on Christ and his word. Faith is believing the invisible. It brings the unseen into reality. This was what enabled these patrons of old to plug their lives into the everlasting arms of the, of the Almighty and their bold in the presence of God continually to the very end of their earthly ministry. Polycarp, 
who was one of the disciples of John the Beloved and a, the Bishop of Smyrna was given an offer of freedom and deliverance from martyrdom if you would deny Christ. Polycarp was one of the um, direct disciples of John the Beloved. And when he was caught, they told him, we, he said, if we kill you, you are too young to die, we, we want to give you some days, some years to live, but you need to deny Jesus. And they gave him that opportunity that looks like is a, a scholarship. What was Polycarp? And what will be your decision? If you are given such a thing by hoodlums, by people of the opposite religion, and say, deny Jesus, turn to our religion, and we will not kill you. He, Polycarp, totally rejected the offer and refused to deny the Lord. He said, and I quote him, 86 years I have served him. He said, forget before I gave my life to Christ. He said, from the day I gave my life to Christ till now, I have served Jesus for 86 years. And he has done me no wrong. I have followed Jesus for 86 years. How many, how old? How many years have you followed Jesus? 30 years and you are celebrating and doing an anniversary? See Polycarp that have served and followed Jesus. See Polycarp that have been faithful like John the Beloved to that time. And he say, I have served him for 18 and 6 years and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? He told them, how can I blaspheme the person who saved me? Say, no, it's not possible. He remained firm in his resolve, even when he was threatened to be thrown to the wild beast and to the fire. What a life of consistency in his work with Christ. You, can I ask you, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, it's not only Polycarp, John Hawes, one of the saints of the old, was brought and tied to a stake, and then they put wood and pour fuel. And of those days, and they told him, I watched the film, I watched the video, and they told him, I said, John Hawes, a theologian, he said, can you, we give you the last chance to be released from this stake so that you will not be born? Can you deny all you have said and preached and we set you free? And John Oz answered, all I have preached and all I have written, I stand on them. Say, if it's fire, put fire on it. I stand on all I have preached. I stand on all I have written. They set him on fire. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he died. He went to heaven. I, do you hear about William Tandale? He was, he read English. And a first class student. And because of his passion, he went to Israel. And spent four years studying Greek, uh, studying Hebrew. And after a master Hebrew, he came, he translated the New Testament into English. And they caught him in England. And they said he was making useless mess of English language. Why should he translate the Bible into English? And they tied him on a stake. And they set him on fire. And they burnt him to ashes. And they, but he didn't deny, he didn't reject, he stood on his ground. And I read of a, another saint of old who did a translation of the, of the Bible. And when he died, you know, the hatred that was on him, they went to his grave, assumed his uh, corpse, set his bone on fire, the stream. And that stream carried the, the ashes of his bone 
and entered the ocean that went everywhere. And today, the word of God, the Holy Bible, they were burning and destroying, have reached everywhere in the world. They stood their ground. Will you stand your ground? We are ankle hold in the storms of life. The storms of life will come. Will your ankle hold? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong ties lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or will it remain firm? When temptation comes, will your anchor drift, you shift, or will you remain firm? For John the, Belo for John the Baptist, his anchor remained firm. He said, Herod, it is wrong for you to take your brother's wife he didn't apologize. Today we have apologetic uh, preachers who say, ah, sorry, I didn't know that what I said offended you. I didn't mean to offend you. Don't go anywhere. Tomorrow they will, they will change their message. I pray you will be a preacher with backbone, that you will not change your message because of what people will, will say. If somebody doesn't like the message, he can find his way. He can leave. So that if he lives, when he gets to hell, he will know is the truth of the word of God that pursued him and went to hell. Then you going to hell with him. Don't go to hell because of an unrepentant sinner. Don't endanger your Christian life and your relationship with Christ because of somebody who doesn't want to change his method of life. Who doesn't want to be saved. Who doesn't want to be born again. Who is not pray john the beloved said i am your companion in tribulation john the, the william tender is was a companion in tribulation polycarp a companion in tribulation john horse a companion in tribulation men that have hazarded their life and they stood for the truth of the word of god without wavering they are not like reeds shaking here and there they are standing firm in faith like paul the apostle said i finish my course i pray you will finish your course like caleb that said now i am 85 80, uh, 85 years old i'm still strong i'm still in my conviction and i am still going with the lord i'm still fighting the battle for the lord he stood his ground. I pray you will stand on your conviction. I pray a poor apostle gave his life over. I said, Lord, what will you have for the kingdom? Give me what you want my life to be. And he stood to remain in that experience. I pray you will take that course of life. You will take that stand like Paul and remain in, his, in the calling and remain in the message and so that you will be among the saints that will abide unto the end. That when the road is called up yonder, you will be there. And when the saints come marching in, you will be among those that will march in together, all of, to, all of us together, marching in with Jesus, our captain, our savior, our sanctifier, our, our high priest, our king. He is all in all. He has gone to prepare mansion for each one of us. I pray nobody will take your mansion. I pray nobody will take your position. Somebody took the position of Judas Iscariot. David took the position of nobody will take your position in Jesus name. Shall we uh, close our eyes as we pray to the Lord? Ask him, God, I want to be among the least of saints, among the men, both not only in the Bible time, but in the contemporary time, who will follow this course? Who will stand for the truth? Who will stand for righteousness? Who will serve Jesus to the end? Come what may, a companion in tribulation, a companion in persecution, a companion in mockery, a companion in the assignment that God has given. Paul said, there's a mark set before me. I'm pursuing that mark. I'm running towards it. I will not look left. I will not look right. I'm going toward that mark. Until I get to it, I will not be tired. I will not be like the prophet from Bethlehem, Judah, who got tired on the road. 
I've set my face as a flame. My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will not turn back until I go to the end. As I watched that John horse, he said, All I have preached, I stand by it. All I have written, I stood by it. I am not changing. And he didn't change. You will not change. We will not change. We will stand with Jesus. John the Beloved followed him from the call at the seashore until Calvary, until the cross, until after the cross, even at the Pat uh, island of Patmos, he stood for the word of God. He continued a companion of Jesus, even when he was lonely, the only man standing, and he stood. I pray you will stand. I pray you will not compromise. I pray you will stand for the truth and stand for the kingdom and stand for righteousness and stand until the end in Jesus. I pray you will get to that mark. You will get to your mark. You will finish your course. You will conclude well. You will fulfill your ministry. In the name of Jesus, you will not go back. You will not turn back. You will not compromise. You will not be here and there. You will not be apologetic and be begging and be apologizing for standing for the truth. You will stand for the truth to the end. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. How I pray, your grace will keep us. Your grace will rest upon us. That grace that kept the men of old, it will keep us. That we will not bend. When they, our, anchor, our anchor will hold, my anchor will hold, our anchor will hold to the end. No matter the storms of life, we will stand. No matter the cables that we strain, our anchor will not drift. Our anchor will remain firm to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.